Hi, and welcome to a Warlock's Tower battle report. So, we've got the Force of the Astra Militarum versus uh, Glenn at Spurs Forever, or VR rather, on Twitter, um, and his Space Wolves again. So, Glenn sat up first, and he has four Thunderwolf Cavs, each with Storm Shields um, and various weapons uh, to lead things off. They're joined by an Iron Priest with three or four cyberwolves. Running back from those are some wolfen in a part of a murder pack. And then in the building above those is the other five wolfen. So they're plus one on the wolfen chart. And above that is an iron priest with four wolfen. So both the iron priests are the elite choice version. Um, and then below that is the last cannons in the building. So there's two units of two last cannons and a uh, plasma gun in each. Glenn also has a battle lord on a Thunderwolf cab, again with the same unit as four Thunderwolf cab. So they've all got storm shields and are pretty choppy, power claw, um, thunder hammer, and just one guy with a chainsword. And then he also has 20 uh, Fenrisian wolves in one unit. They're both outflanking and have acute senses. And then to face off against them, I've got a Psychana division on a bit of fun. We've gone for Demonology Malefic. So we've got a Blob Squad, as they're known, of 30 Guardsmen. They've got three Melt Guns. They are joined by a Lord Commissar. And they are there just to kind of hold Glen up and stop those Thunderwolf Cav just smashing through and into those very, very squishy psychic at the back. Um, then below that we have two units of Plasma Gun um, Command Squad, so three Plasma Guns in each. The, um, the HQ Choice has a item which makes everyone within six inches have preferred enemy. I'm going to, for some reason, choose Space Wolves. So that you will also take effect, so that's going to affect the last cannons, the Plasma Guns, and the Blob Squad primarily. Uh, then we've got a Wyvern uh, to kick out those templates and uh, a unit of auto cannons and a Chimera with nothing in it, it's just a troop choice, just to hopefully, if need to be, move forward and take some objectives. So we're playing Maelstrom and we are also playing the Relic. So the Relic is the little standard in the middle and then basically it's almost number six on the dice apart from... Uh, the middle top is missed for the Maelstrom objectives, and number three is basically behind Glenn's deployments. So Glenn got to deploy first, but I managed to pop the six and steal the initiative. Now, I was aware I wasn't going to do a huge amount with shooting during this phase, just because of the range of the quality last guns from the um, Imperial Guardsman. I didn't want to push forward and allow him to charge more easily. Um, but I did want the ability to bring Saikana Division on to um, raise some demons. So I've got all three options for raising demons. Uh, the Great Demon, uh, heaps and heaps of the Primaris power to bring on units of demons, and the Herald of Demon, Herald Demons, as well as the Torrent Flamer. So the Saikana Division works that the Saika, if he's within 12 of any of the units, knows all of the powers. So I know two of most of those powers um, and I then can channel on a 2 plus for two of the units because they've got a commissar on each and I also pretty much get to ignore the perils chart, I just get to execute one of the psychers instead. So that unit, the psychana formation gives me plus nine um, warp charge dice. So pretty powerful, um, especially as Glenn has no psychers at all. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Pretty cool unit though. So as I say, I've got first turn, I pull up my Maelstrom objectives and it's four markers which are just impossible to get. Three could not be further away behind Glenn's whole army. Um, so I got three of those. So not a great start for Maelstrom. I generally like Maelstrom though, I generally am able to pick up points, but 
yeah, we'll see how we go. So in the first turn, I cast the ability, which means that units as they deep strike don't scatter, um, and bring on two units of blood letters. Uh, choice of blood letters is basically because they're the models I have. Um, so yeah, pretty limited on that front, but blood letters cool. That's all good. Then I do some shooting. I manage to kill one Thunder Wolf and take two wounds off two others. And that's with the Wyvern and the two Heavy Weapon Squads. Glenn then manages to push forward with his Thunder Wolf Cav. And actually, that's a priority to get the Relic. Um, whereas the Iron Priest just tanks forward. He rolled the plus three movement, plus three to charge range. So... He managed to charge into the Bloodletters turn one over on my top or right flank, depending on how you look at things. Um, so I don't mind that. They're a free unit. If I can chip some wounds off them, I'm hoping that he'll destroy them in a turn on pop test after I've chipped a couple of wounds, maybe off dogs, maybe off the Iron Priest. And then he stood right in front of a heap of shooting. So I don't mind him flying forward as long as he pops them. So then I can turn two. Um, it's actually, I uh, turn one, it's actually a draw in that combat. I do two wounds, he does a wound. Um, he, although they're AP2, he likes not to put the wound onto the Iron Priest and take off two dogs. So we draw combat, and I think, yeah, so I've still got eight blood letters there. Um, so that's all good. I can live with that. I've chipped off a couple of wounds. Um, and I can move the other bloodletters over to help him out. Um, I then, at the start of my turn, can bring on my one flyer. This is the one with the ten veterans in the back of it, so I'm pretty chuffed that's on. I can sort of move on and threaten the um, relic with that. Um, I'm not very keen to go into hover mode in front of the last cannons, but, yeah, it's not the end of the world if I have to. Um... But it fires its missiles into the um, Wolfen and manages to remove the power, the storm shields from the front. So yeah, three gone from those guys. So again, the units are made up very similarly with a couple of power storm shields, three storm shields, thunder hammer, power claws, um, and the axes which struck initiative on the charge. Um, and then managed to shoot off another thunder wolf calf. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Chipping away at them pretty fast, so that's all good. They drop the relic because the one who's holding the relic gets shot. Um, I bring down another unit of blood letters, so the unit not engaged in combat is just brought down, um, obviously to help chip away at that iron priest, hopefully. Um, but the iron priest and the dogs wipe out a unit of blood letters. So, yeah, Glenn decided to put the attacks onto his Iron Priest and rely on his one-up save. Um, AP2 swords, obviously no good against the AP3 swords, no good against his save. So, um, yeah, he manages just to take the one wound. So the Thunderwolf Cav, again, push forward, um, threaten either my Guardsmen or the Blood Letters. Uh, I take, and the Wolfen push forward. He leaves the, the small unit, or the depleted unit, I should say, at the back of the board just to hold Objective 3. So I think between the two of us, we pulled out through five secure Objective 3 cards on turn one. So Glenn goes up on the Maelstrom points. He gets first blood because he kills the uh, Wyvern. Um, I'd berated him for taking the last cannons. I, I'd be, if it was my Space Wolf army, because Glenn's got the models, he could drop the two last cannon units... Uh, drop some Fenrisian Wolves or something like that and upgrade those to two naked Wolfen packs. Um, I put one in a Rhino to keep up with the other, the rest of the army um, and then you plus three or four on the, plus three on the Wolfen chart gives you really big impact on both movement and on um, close combat. So that would be my preference, but yeah, he likes his last cannons, and he, he was very pleased with himself for blowing up my wood in turn one. Um, I thought I was out of range, which is why it's not in cover, but yeah, get your tape measures up, guys. This is the reason to do it. Um, in my turn, 
Um, he kills all but one of the blood letters, so that, that means he's locked in combat. I can't shoot him, which is quite a major problem. Okay, it's primarily last guns, but there's a couple of melt guns in there, um, which I'm keen to get shooting into that um, uh, one wound Iron Priest, but such is life, you know, the rules are the rules, and when you've got one blood letter left, that's, that's, that's tough luck. Um, he charged my guardsmen and made a huge mess, but they're stubborn leadership 10, so they held. I then charged the depleted unit of blood letters into the back of him and raised another unit of blood letters. And then, important with you doing this, uh, is change your psycho, psycho first. It drops the amount of power dice you can have, but he knows the power while the psychic brotherhood know the power. So. As soon as you cast it with the Psychic Brotherhood, he no longer knows the power. So I got myself a Billy the Bloodthirster for, well, almost free, killed my Psyker, um, and he's ready to fly over into combat as and when he's needed. So that's a pretty powerful unit. The flyer moves on to threaten going into hover mode and dropping off some uh, veterans very near the... Um, Relic objective, uh, the second flyer moves on with no one inside, but starts taking pot shots at the last cannons, primarily to save my flyer. I'm kind of keen to keep both flyers around so that, um, <clears throat> yeah, I can protect the relic or, or offer effectively fire support to the relic. I know transports can't, or vehicles can't pick up the relic, but um, yeah, I'm keen to have them around for that reason. Glenn. Uh, he's really unlucky with his acute senses re-roll and his outflank. He was keen to bring his uh, Thunder Wolf Cav on uh, into my Blob Squad and into the Saikana division, but he rolls on the other side of the table and comes on behind my <coughs> Chimera, which I, I pulled no cards, which it, it can move forward and gain. So it's just, again, it's taking pot shots through the train. Um, but I think the days are, might be numbered. It's got Lightning Core, Power Claw, <clears throat> Thunder Hammer and a pretty strong Lord come on right behind them. The grind in the middle continues, but joined by some Wolfen. Uh, pretty sure they're going to make a pretty big mess of those blood letters. Again, I'm not unduly concerned. They've come charging forward and they're stood right in front of a heap of plasma guns. There's only one Storm Shield left in that unit. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can chew through those guys with the with the plasma guns, so I mean they're preferred enemies, so that should be all good. Um, that is basically how it works out. Uh, the Iron Priest um, does the job and um, keeps him in the fight, but uh, slowly that unit is getting ground out. I mean, with a very good armor saves all over, and obviously not the the most fighty units in the world. Um, blood letters in theory of combat unit but one attack each and strength four just doesn't cut it so um let us gradually chewing through those units and, and the blood first is hopefully going to go in and make a mess in a moment um so yeah that's not awful that situation I know it looks pretty painful for guardsmen versus close combat units but it's my turn next take some shots into the wolf and loitering in the train and they survive last cannon shots, they survive auto cannon shots and yeah just keep making the terrain saves or armor saves so I think I piled a heap of shots into them and just did nothing. Yeah Glenn shot off one of my last cannons, they failed their morale test and ran off the board so again he's all chuffed with his last cannons in the building. <laughs> um, so yeah again good reason to measure guys, keep them out of range, could have easily done it but I just I just didn't think you forget how, how long last colors range are when they get going. The bloodthirster charged into the combat over at the top, and the plasma guns kind of shuffled away from the Thunderwolf Cav. Uh, and so, Karna Division heroically running towards the um, uh, the Thunderwolf Cav. I chuck four dice, needing twos to. Um, Bring on a bloodthirster, um, and yeah, managed to fail. Got a double one in there, and failed to bring on a bloodthirster. So they're stood now 
in front of that unit, just waiting to be munched. Um, yeah, not feeling quite so brave now that they're not a 10 foot tall killing machine. The plasma guns do their job and finish off the um, of the Wolfen. The blood thirster goes in and stomps the um, Iron Priest and the um, Last Remaining Thunderwolf Cav. The lone Fenrisian Wolf takes on a unit of Psychanas on of Psychic Brotherhood on his own and beats them. They're actually pretty useful on the charge. I mean, they've got close combat weapon and a pistol, so. They kick out three attacks apiece, so I thought it was actually worth doing, but the, the wolves are just brilliant. You can tell, I mean, I'm, I'm a fanboy g in many respects, but the power creep from Astra Militarum and Demon Days to the Space Wolves, the, the Fenrisian Wolves and the Cyber Wolves are just so much better than the, the combat units coming out of the Demon Book. So, yeah, it munches through them pretty quickly, does the job. Uh, veterans are dropped off from the um, from the bear Valkyrie and start shooting into the um, Wolfen as well. I really hope to kill both, but again, Glenn makes a heap of terrain saves um, and yet yeah, keeps them in the game. And the Thunderwolves charge into the Chimera. And the auto cannons. That's going to be a pretty swiftly over combat. Uh, the Lord breaks off from the unit and moves and kills the Psychana division. Then the Fenrisian wolves come on again. Cute senses, but this time actually works, and he comes on to um, challenge the veteran squad who now hold the relic. Yeah, as I say, the Lord made short work of the. Um, Cyclone Vision, even though they're stubborn with their Commissar, they, they get absolutely munched, and the auto cannons get destroyed. I managed to cast though a um, Herald and a. I got six on the Psychic Phase, and so I just had a decent amount of dice and uh, brought on a, another unit of Blood Letters and a Herald of. Nurgle, a, um, so yeah, they're going to run and try and get in the way to just try and say, look, you've either got to charge me or you've got to go round. Uh, the blood thirster uh, moved in and picked up the um, relics. So obviously he's only moving six now, but I'm pretty happy that such a powerful model's got hold of that. The Wolfen is still there though. He's had so many shots going to him. But I'm actually pretty confident that Wolfen's going to take out the Blood Thirst, especially after a couple of last cannon shots. So I'm a little bit concerned about that. It's, as I say, it's fairly amazing that a HQ monster is scared to death of an elite single figure from a unit. Um, but I think that's pretty rightly so. Um, he's going to get to swing whatever. He's got an AP2 weapon. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly big problem for the Blood Thirst. The wolves push forward, the blood letters move out far enough that um, we're pushing the, the thunder wolves to go round. Whether they choose to go after the warlord kill and try and pick up that unit, which is now joined by the Lord Commissar at the top, um, or what, we shall see. So the Fenrisian wolves and the wolfen charge um, the, the bloodthirster. The Thunderwolf Cav charge into the front unit and destroy them, take out the plasma guns. Um, the, the Blood Thirst was actually really lucky. He survived on one wound. Um, the Lone Remaining Wolfen was pretty unlucky not to kill him. The Monster Hunter from the Fenrisian Wolves was unlucky not to do more. Um, okay, he took a three up arm save against those guys, but. Yeah, he was left there on one wound, but that means he's still holding the relic. I can move over, and weirdly, it's going to be a lot more survivable. The Bloodthirster handing the relic over to the Imperial Guard veterans. There's just more wounds. Um, he's shooting at them with last cannons, and he's not going to chew through them in time. So at this point, his one remaining hope is to, uh, to hold the relic, is to get his uh, Thunderwolf Cav into my 
veterans. We both know we're going to do this. Um, it's pretty inevitable that they're going to be holding it. Um, at, at going into the final potential turns, we're, we're on turn five at this point and rolling for the random game length. Uh, I think we are almost even on our Maelstrom cards. It's a really tight game at this point. Um, the veterans move up, they get handed the relic, and they're stood in terrain to try and give themselves a chance against those last cannon shots. The flyers move round to put some shots into the last cannon, and um, which doesn't do an awful lot. Uh, again, uh, terrain saves are made. Uh, so I think he's still got two last cannons and a plasma gun at the top, uh, two last cannons at the bottom. So yeah, I charge the blood letters and the plague bearer into the Thunderwolf cab, just hoping to um, hold them up. Lots of melt gun shots and um, last shots do absolutely nothing off to those guys. And I, I guess reasonably lucky the. In the challenge between the Herald of Nurgle and the Power Fist wielding champion, he fluffed a couple of attacks. I made a couple of ward saves and survived. Um, and the Blood Letters survived their pop test and are on one guy remaining. So, yeah, it was it was fairly lucky. I think I killed more Blood Letters on the pop test than on the um, than in combat. At this point, I hover over with the uh, Valkyrie, taking one hull point, and the unit of um, of uh, veterans move into it, accompanied by the Lord Commissar. So at this point, they the theory goes he can shoot the Valkyrie out of the sky with his last cannons if they crash. He then has to be in a position to charge him with his Thunderwolves. Um, and it, as I say, it's really close on the Maelstrom point. So he's got some difficult decisions to be made. And then I manage with the last remaining Psychonic unit to drop down a unit of Blood Letters and run them to spread them out. So at this point, his Thunderwolf Cav, they've freed themselves up from the combat. They killed the last Herald and the Blood Letter. But they've got to run across the board and try and get into that unit. Um, he sat on objective cards, which means if he holds the objective, which is currently surrounded by the last remaining few models of the Blob Squad and the HQ unit with my Warlord in it, he could hold the most from objective. So Glenn probably quite rightly decides he's never going to get around the Blood Letters. If he charges the Blood Letters, he then... Yes, he can destroy them that for a unit, but he can't get into the um, into the um, the guys inside the vendetta. He's very unlikely to drop the vendetta and kill them all with a with an explosion. So uh, it's hovering anyway. So he's got to explode it and then kill them all with the explosion. So um, he decides to go for the maelstrom points, um, and basically he needs to kill my warlord, which seems pretty likely and clear the troops choice off of the objective which also seems pretty likely uh, the last cannon moves down to hold objective five and so he charges in uh, impact hits to a heap of damage kills off pretty much the hq choice i accept the challenge with my lord hoping that his involved save might keep him alive and then Glenn completely whiffs his attacks into the unit of guardsmen, but destroys my lord. So at this point, if he holds the objective, then um, then then he wins Maelstrom. I win the relic, and we call it a draw. Now, sometimes dice are cruel. It turns out that he breaks the unit. It's a double one test, I think, or not far off. Uh, so they break from combat. Obviously, the Thunderwolf Cav are Nish 4. My guys are Initiative 3. I pop the 6 and manage to break from combat. But if I run any distance at all, I'm clearing out of the way, and he holds the, the um, objective. 
but I double won it and I'm, I'm holding the objective. So, yeah, actually thinking about it now, I'm not sure if a, a broken unit can hold an objective. Um, so maybe you did win them wrong. Maybe I comment below. Maybe we've played this wrong. But we we're at the end of the game, uh, we actually drew on Maelstrom objective cards and I held the relics. So, so I won the game overall. Uh, we call it a 15-5 in tournament points. Um, comment below. Let me know if we should have been a 10-10. Um, I had Glenn a coffee, possibly. But it was a great game. The Demonology Malefic uh, was really fun with the Psychana Division. The Psychana Division wasn't even maxed out. I think I could have easily got another three or four um, um, units into that. Um, which would amount to pretty much a unit of blood letters a turn, or whatever, a unit of demons a turn, or a herald each turn. So, yeah, super powerful, um, and, yeah, really fun. It really, really upped the level of the Esmolotarum. I think if I took a CAD or, or a, another formation um, with the Esmolotarum, I... I think this Space Wolf unit are just two or three notches higher on every aspect, so I think they would have absolutely munched me, and um, I'd have been fleeing for my life very, very quickly. But the Psychano Division just dropping in, I think, I'd love to know how many points of extra demons I got. I think I got in five units of Blood Letters and a Blood Thirster, in reality, I probably should have got a second Bloodthirster. Um, so it's a lot of points of demons, essentially for free. Um, it's not many points, the Psychana Division. Um, so in the Psychana Division, I took a total of 10 extra Psychers uh, within the Psychic Brotherhood, so the base 3 units of 5, 10 extra Psychers, level 2 on the the main Psyker and two Commissars, and that comes in at a total of 425 points. So once you've got the Blood Thirster up, you, you're, you're up, um, and very quickly you're, you're chewing into those extra points. So, yeah, really fun way to play the game, and, yeah, the Malefic on those guys is just silly. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Battle Report. Um, comment below and let me know what you think. Give me suggestions for... Future games, I think I've got a fairly, in the distant future, plans on getting a load of flyers together and uh, doing a, a air cav um, Imperial Guard list. Um, so keep an eye out for those guys. Um, and I'm certainly working on a pretty cool orc list as well. So keep tuned to the channel, subscribe, like this video, and let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. Bye.